then the material starts to deform. And the interesting thing about sand is that it will then automatically form a fold on the plane which is in this point that touches the line. Okay? So this point corresponds to a plane in this angle here, 2 theta, is twice the angle between sigma 1, the biggest stress, this is sigma 3, and the normal to the fold. Okay, so what I do now is I erase this, and the fold normal, which is this line here, makes the angle theta with sigma 1. And this is then the plane that becomes the fold, like this. And of course, because of symmetry, you also get another fold, like this. And these two folds are the one, the, these two folds are the planes which are activated if the Mohr circle touches this line. This angle, theta, because of the slope of this line, can never be 45 degrees. If it would be 45 degrees, the line would be like this. Okay? So, the fault planes in sand or in rocks are always closer to sigma 1 than 45 degrees. If we now go to the next picture, or the next slide, um, I will explain to you this in a little more detail by a very, very famous experiment which was invented by King Hubbard, one of the greatest structural geologists uh, who ever lived. Um, and what he did was the following. He built a box out of wood maybe. It could be about this big. And in this box he put a wall that can be moved with this screw. And after that, he sprinkled a lot of sand into this box. Very simple. Just take the sand and sprinkle it inside. And until you build about six, seven centimeters. After you finished, you start turning your knob and move this wall. And you move this wall to the right. Okay, and what happens then is that you get normal folds. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I go. Can I do it again? Okay, so you move the wall to the left. On this side, you get a normal fold, and on this side, you get a reverse fold. Of course, you're moving the wall to the left, but what is interesting is that the normal folds are steeper then the reverse folds. And this is something which, which happens automatically. The sand chooses to form the folds like that. And the reason for that is that on the left side of the box, because we have compressed the sand, sigma 1 is horizontal. That is the biggest stress. And on the right side, because we have extended the sand, sigma 1 is vertical. That is the biggest stress. So, in fact, in this box, the angle between sigma 1 and the fault plane is the same on both sides. It is simply that sigma 1 is vertical here, and sigma 3 is horizontal there. That gives you the steep fault on the right side and the shallow fault, shallow dipping fault on the other side. I hope that it has been explained clearly. I will repeat this explanation a couple of times later in the lecture series. Okay, and now let's let's take five minutes break. Okay, so so now we have learned a lot about the geometries of folds, about fold tips and relays and big folds and small folds. We have learned the basics of the mechanics of folding, and I've explained to you why reverse folds are shallow 
and normal folds are steep. Okay. Never forget this diagram. And the last part of the lecture, I will talk to you about fluid flow. Groundwater, oil, or gas, but maybe also hydrothermal fluids deeper in the earth. Fluid flow and faulting. One of the best places to have a good idea about simple fluid and fault relationships is in the town of Maastricht, quite close to here. This is a quarry in Maastricht. We sometimes make excursions uh, to this quarry in the Cretaceous. So this is a limestone, quite a porous limestone. And what you see here is a layer which I made yellow. And then this layer is faulted. It goes down here and go up like this. So this structure here is a little graben. Maybe you have heard the term before. The graben is the central part between two faults that come down. Now, this fault plane is here, not so steep, and then in this part it becomes steeper, and it's not so steep, and then it's again steeper. And what you see is these black lines here. These black lines are lichen, lichen which grow on the limestone surface because water comes out of the rock. Okay, this is, this is the place where it's always wet. And these are the steeper parts of the faults. And if you go and look carefully, or if you go and look closely, you will find that the steeper part of these faults are actually open. There is a crack in the rock. And this is called a releasing section. I'll draw it for you. The fault is like this. There are parts which are not so steep, parts which are steeper, and then parts which are not so steep. And if I move this fault, then by geometry, I open up this part. And these are the releasing section of the fold. And if the rock is able to make, make this open fracture, then of course this will be the place where the fluids are flowing. And that is exactly what you see here. This is where the water is coming out of the rock. Now, in this quarry, the fractures are open and water is moving through it. But in many other places in the crust, the water is uh, carrying a lot of dissolved material, for example, calcite or quartz. And this material can crystallize. So, in an outcrop, which uh, we studied in Oman, again, it is limestone, again, it is faulted, but here, the fault zone is full of white vein material, kluftvullungen. Okay? These veins line up along the fault, and this is, of course, formed because first the fault opened up, it formed open fractures, then the hydrothermal fluids have moved through this fault zone, through these fractures, and crystallized the calcite. So this fault was open at one point, and then the fluids were flowing through, and now it has been cemented again, and it is a fault which is inactive at the moment. And this process of faulting with openings, fluid flow, and then re-cementation is one of the major processes by which you can form ore bodies. Here is a famous picture which I got from my colleague Professor uh, Steve Cox from the Australian National University. He studied gold mines which all formed along fault, faults. So here is the steep section, here is the not so steep section, here is steep again. The fault has formed, it has moved up, and in this part, just like it has been shown here, you crystallize a lot of quartz. But these hydrothermal fluids were in fact not just quartz containing, but they also called, uh, contain gold. And in this mine, you can f 
find big nuggets of gold, and it is in fact the place of one of the very active and uh, successful gold mines. Simply because of the fact that there were these releasing sections. So, whenever faults form in releasing sections in rocks that are strong enough to support these open fractures, you will get a lot of fluid flow and the faults are conduits for fluid flow. So the word is here, conduits. Conduit is the Wegsamkeit in German. Okay. In other cases, faults are not conduits for fluids at all. In fact, they are seals. They actually block the motion of fluids. And the very famous picture for that is in one of the uh, textbooks on oil geology. It was already found in 1915 that here is a reservoir for oil. So this is an oil field. And then there is a fault. And on the other side, there is water. And it is quite clear that this fault here, it must be closed. Otherwise, the oil would just flow and go into the other side of, the, of this structure. Okay? So faults can be conduits for fluid flow, but other faults can be seals, abdichtungen. And seals in faults are very, very important economically because if you are looking for oil or if you are looking for gas and you have a structure in the subsurface and you want to drill a hole in it to find your oil or gas, you have to know whether the fault is sealing. Otherwise, you may not find oil in that place. And the sealing of such faults is very uh, complicated because it is controlled by the geometry but also by the properties of this fault zone. Okay, this fault zone here. The geometry um, is something in this case that tells us about juxtaposition, überlago. Okay, so let me explain this to you. What I made a diagram to explain this based on this picture here. Okay, I, I made a profile through this plate going from here to there. And this layer, this black layer here, say is the one which is yellow in this picture. Okay, so there's, it's a profile along this plane. I go to the right and in the beginning I don't have a fault at all. The layer is just horizontal. And then when I cross the fault tip, the layer is going down. Because my profile goes on this side of the fault. So if you are on front of the fault, in your geological profile, you see that the layer is bending down until about the middle here. Now what happens if you make the same profile but on the other side of the fault, here. Then what you will see is that the layer goes up. Okay? So if I make two geological profiles, the first profile is on the front side of the fault, I will see the layer going down. And the other side, I will see the layer going up. I hope that this is clear. So what happens if I take these two profiles and put them on top of each other. Uh, what I see now is two geological profiles and between these two profiles I have the fault plane. Okay, this is one profile and the layers are my fingers. And this is the other profile. And what the fault does, it changes the